photographs as long as we've been dating. I think, um, I think he started because I was playing sports and he didn't want to watch because it was boring. So he thought, I'll take pictures. And so that's kind of how he started with photography as well. It was something that we had in common and still have in common, but we have a lot of fun with it. So, um, a couple of examples of two HDR photographs, um, one of me and one of him. We, we have an interesting approach to photography because I'm coming from the art point of view and Lewis is coming from the science point of view because he teaches physics at Coastal Carolina University. So there are things that I do really well and there are things that he does really well. And when the two of us are together, everything is awesome. Just like the Lego movie. <laughs> HDR is not the only way to take photographs. There are lots of ways to take photographs. And what we're going to figure out together today is when do we use HDR, when it is the best time to use it, what kind of photographs, what kind of experiences would we use it for? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all of these photographs that we've taken, none of them were taken using um, HDR photography. They're all just a one single exposure um, and I just wanted to show you an ex Do you have a thingy thing? I have a thingy thing. <laughs> um, but you can take um, regular photographs um, without doing HDR. And there are lots of cool tricks that you can do with regular photographs. Um, he says this is not HDR. I don't believe him. I think this is HDR. It's a six second exposure. Uh, but it's another technique. He left the shutter open for six seconds and it captures the movement of the water. Um, this is the only time in my life that I've seen a rainbow, the start and end of a rainbow. This is the Isle of Skye in Scotland. We went there uh, a couple years ago. And so it's great weather because it could be like big storm over here and beautiful over here all at the same time with your, your view. This one is amazing. Lewis took this picture. I just, every time I see it, I'm just, wow. So you don't necessarily need to have HDR. I hope that doesn't chase you all at the door, um, but it is beneficial in some ways. There are some photographs that you have to use HDR for, like this one right here. And this is when I turn it over to Lewis because it has this word right here, science. <laughs> we are going to... We have a, uh, we made a video tutorial on how to use GIMP, and it's quite easy. So let's see. This video will show you how to make an HDR image using GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, and the Dynamic Range Increase plugin. The first thing we need to do uh, is to bring the three images that we want to combine into an HDR into GIMP and open them as layers. So go up to File, click on Open as Layers, and then go find your three images. Now I've got mine all set here. Here are the three images that I selected, the light one, the middle one, and the dark one. And I'll open those up. And note over here how it arranges them into layers. Uh, for the dynamic range increase plugin to work, the darker exposure has to be on top and the lighter one has to be on the bottom. Uh, if yours comes in a different order, just move the layers to the appropriate place. After this, it's very simple. Just go up to filters and choose dynamic range increase and I have been just using a blur mask of one and click OK and there we are we have an image where both the light areas and the dark areas have been tone mapped into one that shows a nice gradient from light to dark and then we need to merge our layers into one. And so I'm going to go up to the image menu, click on Merge Visible Layers, tell it to merge. And at that point, we are ready to save. 
and actually in GIMP that would be export so export as I'm going to give it a new file name here HDR2 and it's exported and we're all done I've got the directions on how to do it too because you'll be able to do it fine here and then if you leave you'll find that it's going to get cut. I'm going to walk you through it which will make it much more memorable. <coughs> Providing my version of GIMP works. We chose to, to do this with GIMP instead of Photoshop. I have Photoshop on all of these computers but all of you won't have access to Photoshop. So. Um, all the school computers have GIMP, and then you'll be able to download this at home as well. Alright, so, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the three files. So you're going to go to File, and you have to open it as layers. So go ahead and go to File, Open as Layers. Once you've got your three images, going from dark to light, um, you're going to go up to Filter. Then down to EG, and then over to dynamic range increase. And just click that. And the great thing about the software is it puts it all together for you. It does all the matching. I think the windows popped up down at the bottom. Oh, on it. Is this program always one, or do different things mm -hmm. need different ranges? The dynamic range is one. Is it always one? Oh, is it blurry? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. That's just what Lewis um, uses. If you want to have more of a glow around the objects in there, if you push that up, you will have more of a glow. So it's just an experiment. Yeah. That's the way it should always be, just like art. Let's try it. I'm going to increase it. I'm going to So here's an easy way to set automatic exposure bracketing on most recent Canon cameras. Just find the quick menu button which is right here in the 7D. It might be over on this side on uh, the Rebel cameras but press the quick mode button and then find the automatic exposure bracketing setting and select that and what you'll see here is a number line with positive and negatives on there. Zero is the base setting. That's the setting that you set if you are setting the exposure manually and it's the setting that the camera chooses if you're using automatic exposure. But anyway that's the base exposure and oops, let's get back here and to change it you see the dial on top back and forth what we're doing here is we are telling it to take three exposures in this case one at one stop uh, underexposed a darker image one at one stop overexposed a uh, brighter image and one at the base exposure now if you have a very large dynamic range scene you can increase this a lot uh, generally I try to keep it between one and two stops up or down and at the end make sure you hit set to make sure it uh, sticks and that's how you set the automatic exposure balance one other thing that I would suggest to do is to change the drive from continuous to a two second delay. And the reason for that is if you have it on a two second delay you can tilt, press the shutter button and it will fire off all three exposures at once automatically. If you don't have it on delay you have to press the shutter button three times. And that's that. Okay. So then you're going to press this button here. And what Lewis said is um, you go down here there's a two second delay the reason you want to do that is even if you have your camera on a tripod, if you push the button to take the picture, it can move the camera a little bit. And you probably saw with the branches that if the pictures don't line up exactly, um, 
you'll have some blurriness in your picture, especially if you take your pictures outside. So you just set that. So because this is set on program, I don't have to worry about the exposure. I'm just going to press that. It's going to hold the turret. And then it took three exposures. Okay. Um, they're blurry because I was in the um, But you can see that there's different level. That's the medium, that's the darker one, and that's the lighter one. So that lighter one will pick up all the tones here, and the darker ones will pick up all the shadows. Typically, you don't use HDR photography for here because it's not here. Um, it tends to pull out all the line and all the contrast and stuff like that. So um, it's better to use it for architecture and um, landscapes. So what I'm going to do is send, send you out a couple of groups with a camera um, already set up so that you don't have to do anything. Uh, and then just find a picture that you can take. Some of the places that this would be useful is if you are taking a picture of someone and they're standing in front of a window. So it will expose for the light, the window as well as the light on the person. Um, the bad thing about these, as I'm not sure, I haven't used this one in a while. If I turn it off on that side and turn it back on, I don't know if it saves the Okay. Just take one picture. So every time you turn it off and turn it back on, you need to go back to the menu. And right here, it's already on explain the compensation. So then you just drop the I'm gonna adjust that and then we'll just slide it out. I'm gonna go a little bit further. So, okay, so, so we have an extreme, like an extreme dark right? and an extreme light, and then the regular one. All right, so don't turn it off. Okay. All right, so, do you want to take someone with you? Because you need a model as well. Okay, sure. Where are we going outside? Come on. We'll go. Is that where we're going? What can I keep? You can go outside, anywhere in the hall, whatever kind of thing. You want to go outside? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay. We can go out. Is that is that yeah, door okay? I've got a key. No one. Oh. Of course, of course. That's how I work. But I mean, like I know the guy. You said there's HDR apps for your phone. Why does it? Do you use the form?